Hi, Ladies with an Area friends. This is Tammy from Ladies with Parks Recreation Culture, and this is my daughter, Taylin. Today's kit installation creation is magic bubble paint. We're going to be making the paint and painting with it today. You're definitely gonna want um, your surface covered with either a plastic tablecloth that's disposable or with um, some rolled newsprint, newsprint paper or newspaper will work just fine too. It's a bit messy, so definitely a paint smock or an apron like Taylin's got on would be a great idea because it's really fun, but a little bit messy. So things that you're going to need to create all of this today, um, you're definitely going to need some containers to put your paint in. Plastic containers with a lid that are not really big containers because you wanna be able to fill up the container a little bit so that you can make your bubbles grow. Um, and the lid is gonna help it keep moist so that you can do it for a couple of days if you feel like painting again the next day. So the next thing you're going to need is some liquid or powdered temper paint. Taylan already has her three colors chosen out here to make the color she'd like. She's gonna make a minty green. In the recipe, it says that you need to have about a quarter of a cup of powdered temper paint. In the recipe, we did about an eighth of a cup of liquid temper paint and it worked out just fine. If you want it to be a little bit darker, then adding a little more paint in there will help you out with that as well. So Taylor's gonna go ahead and mix her temper paint. A um, little bit of green, a lot of yellow, right? If you want your minty green. Mm -hmm. While she's mixing, I'm just gonna explain the other things that we need to have. So the other things that we need to have, you need to have a tablespoon measuring spoon, you need to have a teaspoon measuring spoon, you need to have some straws, you need to have some clear liquid dish soap, and you need to have some water. We just use the straws to stir just so that we're already using something that works really, really well for us. Um, you're gonna mix up your color and then we'll add the rest. You're gonna need a lot, lot more paint in there, so lots more paint. So don't be shy. There you go. Good. And then bit more green. probably stir that first and see what it looks like. Stir that first. Yep. And then if you want to lighten it up, you can add your white to it. Okay. I think mm. she wants to get a nice light minty green. She's working on it. If you add your white, it'll get nice, nice and light. Yeah. Okay. And then once she's done mixing her color, we're going to mix it all up and show you how to do that. Yeah, maybe a couple more drops. <laughs> okay. Mix, mix, mix. And I'm gonna get our measuring spoons ready. And our water ready. Get more white. Tiny bit more. Okay. That's pretty. Do you like that color? I give it a really good mix. Okay. See if we have enough paint. Okay. We probably need some more paint. Some more paint? Yep, so let's put a bunch more yellow and a couple more drops of green. Okay. So you definitely want to have enough paint in the bottom because the paint needs to stick to the soapy bubble. Okay, that's good. And then a, a bit more green, just like a drop or two. Measuring it out works really well too. Um, we're just trying to make a color so that way it's a little harder to make a color and measure it at the same time. Still same color? Or do you want a little white in there? A little white. A little white? Okay. Make the right color. All right. One or two drops. A couple. Just a blurb. You tip it right upside down and give it a little shake. And then squeeze. There you go. You got her. Ooh, that's going to make a nice color. Yeah. There you go. That's the color you're looking for? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Okay, so we're going to leave our spoon in there. We're just going to move the lid to the side for now. So. First things first, uh, after we've got our paint all mixed, you're gonna go with two teaspoons of liquid dish soap. So clear liquid dish soap again. Two teaspoons. One. Try and get it to all drain off. Two. There we go. I'm gonna put this off to the side. Just let it drip off for a sec. Can you hold the container so I don't flip it? Perfect, thank you. All right. That one's done. And then you need three tablespoons of water. So, mm -hmm. one, two, three, three. Awesome. Three tablespoons of water. Let's get our water up here. Can you want to pass me your paints? Can you take them for me? Put them back up here so they're out of the way. Can you pass me the green so that I'm not reaching in front of you? Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Ooh, that looks good. Okay. 
So Taylor's stirring it all up and it's getting bubbly right now. So can you show them up here how it's kind of getting bubbly and it's very liquidy. So we also have, when you're gonna do this, of course you need your paper to paint on. So Taylor's gonna slide her sample down. We have, every, we've tried everything from just regular computer stock paper to, put that down there and we'll show it later. Computer stock paper, paper to um, construction paper to a little bit heavier cardstock. So you pick cardstock this time? Yes. Yeah. So Taylor's now gonna show you what we do. So moms and dads, if you, I'm gonna grab a blue one and do it at the same time as you. If you have littles who are doing this with you, really important that they don't suck up the straw. Yes, it's temper paint and yes, it's non-toxic, but. Do you want some? Um, sure, yeah. Thanks, me. So definitely you might wanna be the one who blows the bubbles. Now, when you're blowing the bubbles, as you can see what Taylor's doing right now, it is just like blowing bubbles into chocolate milk or your milk. You're trying to make your bubbles grow all the way up out of the out of your container. <clears throat> because once you get them out of your container, you're going to press your paper down almost to the container and it's going to make marks on your paper with the bubbles. So I'm going to show you in blue. It's a little easier to see. That's a big one. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. And put right in the middle. <laughs> it splatted everywhere. <laughs> so if you can see what has happened, I have had bubbles pop all over my paper and the paint has stayed there and made a marbly kind of look. So you can continue doing one color. You can mix it up and do many different colors and overlay them however you like. Talon's gonna keep creating well, I show you some of the things we did with the paper that we created earlier. You pass me your sample. Sure. Taylin recently made this one. Um, she used kind of a minty green and then our red doesn't really go very red on our paper. We didn't have a lot of red paint left. So um, it kind of gives a pinky hue. But this is what it looked like with a couple of colors on the paper. It gets pretty marbly. It looks really pretty. So some things that we did with our paper when we were done, there are many things you can do. You can just make it and then keep it as a piece of artwork. I chose to do a full page today with just um, the blue and the white paper, which made a completely marbled piece of paper. And then I folded it in half and folded it in half again and scored it when I did that, which makes a really cute little card that you can put a clear, a plain piece of paper inside if you like and write a note. And then if you wanted to make an envelope to go with it, you could easily do that as well. Um, that was really fun to make. The other thing I did is I had two marble colors together that I really liked. And I know that Taylor really likes the turquoise color. So I actually cut it out and I used it as an extra mat inside of my photo frame. There's a skinny little line all the way around that is my marbled paper. And when you're actually up close to the photo, it actually like highlights the, the hair accessory she has in her hair and it looks very cute. So it's fun to do. The other thing you can do with it, and I'll take our extra piece, is you can take some scissors and you can cut out shapes. So I'm just gonna cut a piece off of my really cool blue and pink marble piece. And I'm just gonna slightly fold it in half without making too much of a crease. And I'm going to make A really awesome heart for your window. Um, you can make hearts for your windows, hearts to go on cards, you could make stars, any shape that's imaginable you could make with these. You could use them to put inside or on the front of your card to change it up a little bit. There are so many possibilities with these. Um, it's very fun to do, it's super easy, it's fun for everyone. You could change it up and the more you do, the better you get. There's some things that Taylin has learned along the way, which as soon as she's done this one, I think she's gonna share with you how to make the bubbles darker and deeper. So I'll let you do that one. You got it. <laughs> this is very particular as to where she puts her colors. <sighs> so can you take a brand new piece of paper and then let's make one really frothy. I'll sit this over here if you want it. Okay, you wanna explain? Okay, if you want it to be, okay, yes. If you want to make it like very not like super bubbly and like so easy. these are really loose open bubbles if you want it to be really dark kind of dark marble spots like this 
really dark. You want fine little bubbles stirred up really, really good and get those bubbles up as high as you can in your cup. The more you stir, the higher the frothy bubbles come up in your cup. I found if you blow a few bubbles underneath it and then stir it up some more, then you get your frothy bubbles up higher and higher. It's mad science, isn't it, Tay? We're getting good at it. So you want to build the froth up as high as you can. Yours is a lot more higher than mine. It's about a smaller cup. <laughs> My paper straw self-destructed. <laughs> so what we're trying to do is make as small bubbles like this, and then we're trying to get them as close to the top edge as we can so that when we blow the other bubbles, it pushes them up. Here you go, Tay. I can get that one so fast. Well, you ready for it? No, I lost it. Okay, you ready? I'm gonna blow this up and you can splat it on your paper. Okay, go. Go, go, go. All right, blow it up. <laughs> so what happens is you end up with frothy bubbles like this on your paper. When it dries, it gets really dark and it looks like the really dark marblings. Do you have a piece that has it on? It looks like this. It looks like the really dark marbling on the bottom of your page right there. Um, it looks really neat when you do it in and about other ones and you can kind of float it around. It makes really cool marbling. So there's just some different ways. So again, you have light airy bubbles that pop and make really nice open marbling or you have really dark bubbles that when they take a while to dry, um, but they look really, really neat and a lot darker when they do dry. So those bubbles will disappear and soak into the paper and then it will make dark marble spots. We could spend hours doing this. It's very fun. Um, I hope you enjoyed the Kidsolation creation today. I hope you enjoy having fun making your crazy bubble paint art and have fun creating it in any way you like to share with cards or hearts on your windows or map frames for your photos or many other things that you can come up with, I'm sure. Thanks for joining us today and have a wonderful day. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you.